So you might have heard of macronutrients like protein, fats and carbs, but micronutrients are actually what allow all the cellular processes in your body to keep you alive and healthy and build muscle. So the foundation of your diet should really be micronutrients. That's what you want to get covered first. And once you've got all these essential vitamins and minerals, then you can think about protein, calories, carbs, etc. So the essential vitamins that you need are vitamin A, C, D, E, K, and then the B vitamins, B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B7, B9, and B12. And the minerals you need include calcium, phosphorus, potassium, sodium, chloride, magnesium, iron, zinc, iodine, sulfur, cobalt, copper, fluoride, manganese, and selenium. I've put together a diet that will cover all of the daily requirements for all of these essential vitamins and minerals. So if you eat everything in this video, you'll have all your micronutrients covered. And then you can just add on top of all of this if you need more calories, more protein, and you want to make specific recipes, that kind of thing. So these are the things that you can eat every day in order to get the micronutrients that you need. First of all, beef, preferably steak, but ground beef also works. Beef has vitamin B2, B3, B6, B12, iron, phosphorus, selenium, zinc, and choline. So it has loads of micronutrients in beef. And you should try and get some serving of beef every day. Next is four eggs. Eggs contain choline, vitamin B12, and B2. And you want to have the whole egg, not just the egg white. All the good stuff is in the egg yolk. And then if you can handle lactose, two glasses of milk. Obviously milk has calcium in it, but it also has iodine, potassium, phosphorus, and vitamin B5. You can have these glasses of milk like in between meals or with your meals, or you can have this in the form of like a protein shake. I like to make a shake with like fruit and honey and milk and peanut butter. And that's where I get my creatine and my protein powder in. And next, very importantly, a cup of boiled spinach, at least one cup. You can have more than this if you want. Spinach has calcium, iron, magnesium, vitamin A, vitamin B2, B9, and vitamin E. It's very important that you boil the spinach because raw spinach contains oxalates, which can bind to calcium and prevent it from being absorbed into the body. And they can also cause kidney stones. Put the spinach in a pot of boiling water, boil it for like three minutes, and then that will reduce the number of oxalates and make it safer to eat and make a lot of these micronutrients more available. Next, a potato. Potatoes have potassium and vitamin B6 in them. They're easily digestible. They're a great carb source. They won't spike your insulin much like eating bread or pasta or something else will. And it's not that hard to fit a potato in to at least one of your meals every day. And then a handful of almonds. Almonds have magnesium, vitamin B2 and vitamin E and trace amounts of lots of other nutrients. And next, a kiwi or an orange, or you can have orange juice, and grapefruit juice works really well as well. Mostly this is for vitamin C, but kiwi also has a lot of vitamin K and vitamin E in it. And then a handful of sunflower seeds. Sunflower seeds have a lot of vitamin E in them, and also B5 and B1. And then you want some carrot. Ideally, you have a raw carrot just as a snack or something that has all of the vitamin A you need and beta carotene, which will give your skin a kind of golden glow like a tan and has a lot of other health benefits. And lastly, every day have a bit of salt on your meals. If you're eating a very processed diet, you probably get plenty of salt already, so you don't need to add extra salt in. But if you're eating whole foods, generally there's not a lot of salt in like fruit and vegetables. So it's a good idea to add a bit of salt in. Otherwise you might get cramps, you might get dehydrated. And to fuel your workouts every day, I would suggest using fruit and honey. And then if you're working out really hard or you need more calories or carbohydrates, then add in some white rice, like with your beef, or you can add more potato. White rice and potato are both really good workout carb sources. So that's what you want to be eating every day. And then some of the things you want to be having every few days in order to cover some of the other nutrients and load up on all of the important micronutrients. Salmon is a really good one. I'm sure you've heard salmon is very good for you. It has copper, potassium, choline, vitamin B6 and B1, and obviously omega-3 fatty acids, which are chronically low, especially in the American diet, because Americans have a lot of vegetable oils and seed oils, which have omega-6s, and their ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids is really bad. They have way too many omega-6 and not enough omega-3. So you need to have more omega-3 fatty acids in your diet, like salmon and some nuts. 
Chicken breast is also really good, a staple of the bodybuilder diet, obviously. Chicken breast has selenium, phosphorus, choline, vitamin B6, B5, and B3. And obviously it's a great source of protein. Broccoli will cover your vitamin K needs and really good for vitamin B9. Asparagus is a good alternative if you don't like broccoli. Tuna is also really great. It has selenium, magnesium, which is quite rare, phosphorus, vitamin B12, and B3. And bananas have potassium, magnesium, vitamin B6, uh, but I mostly use them as a pre-workout snack and I put them in my smoothies to improve the texture and the taste of those. And avocado is a really healthy fat and it has a good amount of potassium in it and small amounts of other vitamins and minerals as well. Quinoa is good for phosphorus and it's a good carb source, but more importantly, it has ecdysterone in it, which is a plant steroid that acts like testosterone in the body and enhances muscle growth and performance. And once a week, you want to have liver, which has an insane amount of nutrients in it because nutrients are stored in the liver in your body. So when you eat an animal's liver, you're getting like all of the nutrients that were stored in its body for later use. So you basically get like hundreds or thousands of percent of the daily intake for vitamin B12, B2, B9, vitamin A, iron, copper, and choline. And oysters also have like 400% of your daily zinc requirements and also lots of selenium, iron, and copper. So you don't want to eat these too often because you're actually going to have too high levels of these nutrients and too much of anything is not good. If you have like a couple hundred percent of the daily intake, that's generally fine. But if you get up into like 10,000%, then that's generally going to be too much. Especially don't have these two on the same day because they both have a really high amount of copper in them. But if you can just add liver in once a week, Week, that's basically going to act like a multivitamin and like top up most of your vitamins and minerals and make up for anywhere else that you are lacking in your diet. So those are the foundational foods that I think you should be eating on a regular basis. And here are some other really good foods that will improve your health and performance, your testosterone, your muscle growth. First is unheated raw honey. So when honey is heated to make it like runnier and to filter it, that destroys the beneficial enzymes that are in the honey. So you wanna look for cold extracted, cold filtered, unheated, those kinds of labels. Next, garlic and onion are really good for testosterone and libido, especially when you eat them raw. Berries contain polyphenols and loads of other really good nutrients that have anti-inflammatory effects. They're antioxidant, anti-cancer, and they boost exercise performance. Pineapple contains bromelain, which is really good for testosterone and for relieving allergies. Bone broth or stock is really good for your gut health and bones also contain lots of micronutrients in them that you otherwise wouldn't really access because we don't eat bones much these days. And lastly, fermented food like sauerkraut, kimchi, yogurt or kefir are also really good for the gut because they contain live bacteria that will aid in the digestion of food in your gut. So ideally you want to get all your food from the best sources available to you. For beef, that means grass-fed cows. So most cows are housed in barns and they're fed like soy and grains and they're injected with growth hormone to fatten them up, loaded with estrogen and antibiotics. You want to buy beef from cows that can roam like meadows of grass and eat grass like they normally would. For chickens, most chickens are kept in barns with no space to move and they're fed soy and other grains like cows are. You want to buy chicken meat and eggs from chickens that are allowed to roam freely and graze on the food that they would naturally eat. You want to get wild caught fish ideally. Most fish are housed in tight farms where they swallow microplastics and heavy metals which then accumulate inside the fish's body, which you then eat. So the microplastics and other pollutants, they get stuck in your body and ruin your health. Wild caught salmon and tuna don't have this problem because they're just swimming freely throughout the ocean or rivers and are exposed to minimal pollutants. Milk is usually pasteurized to make it safer to drink by killing bacteria. This process of pasteurization also destroys the beneficial enzymes and proteins in the milk, and it also kills the lactobacillus bacteria, which produce lactase, which is the enzyme that digests lactose. So if you're lactose intolerant, drinking raw milk might solve this problem for you because it contains the bacteria which produce the enzyme that you're lacking. And if you can't get raw milk because it is like illegal in most states and lots of countries, at least get whole pasteurized milk rather than like semi-skimmed or skim milk. So honey I spoke about earlier, heating it makes it runnier and easier to filter and package, but the heating process destroys the enzymes that make honey such a superfood. 
and it's basically left as just like a sugar syrup, especially with the extensive processing that usually happens before it hits the shelves. Ideally, you want your honey to be as close to its original form as possible uh, without being heated and ideally without being filtered. And lastly, non-organic fruit and vegetables are sprayed with pesticides and herbicides which we then ingest when we eat these foods without peeling them or washing them with special soap. And consuming these nasty chemicals is terrible for human health, it affects your fertility, can cause cancer and damages the nervous system. Organic produce is not sprayed with these chemicals, which makes them much safer to eat. A lot of you watching this are gonna to be too young to afford most of these options, so don't worry about these for now. If you eat healthy foods, like I've listed in this video, you're gonna get like 80 or 90% of the benefits Getting the food from the right sources is going to make a notable improvement, but if you can't afford it yet, don't worry about it. You're already doing better than most people if you're buying these healthy foods. Once you get the money, then you can buy it from really good sources. A lot of you watching might also be lactose intolerant, which means you can't have milk or dairy. Milk and dairy provide high amounts of calcium, iodine, potassium, phosphorus, and vitamin B5. And if you can't drink milk, then you wanna get these from other sources. So you can increase your consumption of boiled spinach, chicken breast, seeds, fish, especially salmon and tuna, and potato. And that will cover most of these nutrients that you're missing out on by not eating dairy. There are a couple of really popular misconceptions about diet. First one is that red meat is bad. Red meat is reported to increase risk of heart disease, diabetes, and a bunch of other problems. But the problem is, the studies that say this, they don't isolate red meat as a variable. So they can't conclude that red meat is causing these health effects. The studies just look at meat eaters who probably have a terrible diet overall, and they say they're eating meat, they also have terrible health, therefore meat is bad for your health. It's like saying that rice gives you big muscles. Like yes, most bodybuilders eat rice, but it's their training and their high protein diet that gives them big muscles. And the rice just happens to be there as a good carb source. And there are examples of people who eat rice and don't have big muscles. Similarly, people who eat red meat tend to have shitty diets as a whole, eating mostly processed garbage that obviously ruins their health. And there are loads of people eating red meat who have great health because they're getting abundant nutrients, they're exercising, they're not eating processed food with seed oils and sugar. So you really can't say that red meat is bad for your health without isolating the variable of red meat which these studies haven't done. Not to mention that humans have been eating red meat for as long as we've existed, or about two million years. So we are quite well adapted to eating red meat. If you eat healthy, then red meat is not going to kill you. Processed food will. The next misconception is that eggs are bad. Egg yolks contain saturated fat, which people automatically assume is bad because it increases cholesterol. But egg yolks are actually clearly shown to improve cholesterol profile by increasing HDL and lowering LDL. Plus, almost all these studies don't control any other parts of the diet. They don't isolate the egg variable. They just say these people eat eggs and they get heart disease more therefore eggs are bad, without considering that these same people probably also eat a load of cake, bread, pastries, vegetable oils, and stuff like that. And again, humans have been eating eggs for millions of years, and the science has shown that they are extremely nutritious. And lastly, the idea that salt is bad. Salt is essential for your health, and if you restrict it too much, then you'll get muscle cramps, dehydration, low blood pressure, increased LDL cholesterol. But obviously, if you have too much salt, that is also bad. If you're eating a whole foods diet, though, without processed stuff like McDonald's, then you generally don't have to worry about eating too much salt because there's not much salt in those kinds of foods like fruit and vegetables. Just don't eat like a stupid amount of salt. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you're gonna try out this diet in the comments. I might do a video in the future on all the functions of these vitamins and minerals and an even more extensive list of food sources for all of them. That will be quite an in-depth video, but it's something I've wanted to do for quite a long time to really like understand all these micronutrients that are so important for our health and our body's normal functioning. And as much to help me understand that as to help you guys, I want to put together like a massive video on all of them in detail. So I'll be working on that soon. And in the meantime, I'll keep releasing the other physique videos and other health and fitness videos. So if you enjoyed this one and you'd like to see more like it, please subscribe. Check out the Toji Physique Program and the Garo Physique Program in the description. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.